I am a veteran of hundreds of presentations, keynotes, talks, classes, lessons, and one or two of them have been okay, I think. So today we're going to talk about how to prepare a talk, a presentation, even work for an article, YouTube video. You ready? Let's go. Hello friends, my name is Matt Brunton. I'm here in the north of England and today we're going to talk about how I prepare a talk or prepare any kind of presentation or setting out or communicating ideas. And I made a video on why you should learn to present, but today we're gonna to do a little bit of the how. You can see my deck here. I've got my deck in front of me and this is how I prepare. It's my proven method for all these kinds of formats. I've even used it for, for blog writing, not just for public speaking. And when you start, you start with a what. You start with a brief. You Maybe you're given a topic. Maybe you're asked to deliver something at a conference or present something at work or write something. There's usually some sort of topic in mind or you have to come up with one yourself. So you need some sort of parameters on that. And the key thing is to develop in the what a working brief, even if you make it yourself. So find out if somebody else is giving you the brief, everything you can. What is the topic? Who is going to be there? What is the audience that you're presenting to? How long do you have to speak? What is the format? Will you be able to use any visual aids? What's happening before and after? Any sort of parameters and, and just make a list of those. And often we think that these kind of boundaries limit us, they constrain us, but actually parameters, boundaries are so important because creativity happens within them. Creativity can't happen in this endless void where we have infinite options. When you start to limit the options, creativity can happen and you can always push against some of them as you go through the process. So define the parameters and then get to work. This is the research stage of things. Now, I like to begin my research by writing down everything I can think of, not by getting lost in books and articles and listening to things. But first of all, I like to just write down everything I can think of on that topic. If I'm doing a presentation on five-a-side football tactics, I don't know why I would be doing that. I don't have the greatest credentials as a football manager, but I would write down everything that I know, everything I can think of about formations, about uh, different, you know, plays, like ways of creating chances and opportunities and positioning and just write down everything I could think of, uh, maybe things that I already knew or already thought were, were good ideas, but also questions. Then I'd be like, hmm, I'm not sure. Should you have a goalkeeper there all the time or should you like have rush goalies where you just swap around? And I kind of write down these questions and I, I try and get as many questions as possible. And I do all that before I begin my research so I'm not coloured too much uh, by the research, immediately getting lost in one person's opinion. But I've got some sense of where I started from, which is really helpful as you go through. So when I've kind of dumped everything out of my brain that I've got, I'll then go into the research Finding uh, salient books on the topic is usually the best, the highest quality work because in books, as opposed to articles that, that are online or on podcasts and other things like that, they can be helpful, but often books go through a rigorous editing process. It's quite difficult to, to publish a book and, and get it out there. It's obviously easier these days with, you know, you can throw it up on Amazon and print on demand and that kind of thing. But in general, uh, books are where it's at and obviously academic books if you're presenting anything uh, of any serious weight. But do the research. Now, the depth of this research depends on the scope of the project. If your talk is uh, very short or it's not something that's of, of great consequence, then you don't need to spend the amount of time somebody's going to spend on a PhD or even a TED talk. But if this is something like a TED talk that can transform your career or a PhD or a book itself, that's going to be a body of work. Obviously, the research goes a little bit deeper. So make sure you put a limit on that. You can research forever and ever and ever. So set yourself a time limit so that doesn't go on too long. Now, during the research phase, I like to move backwards again from the what to the why. So you've got your what, your topic, like my example, five-side football tactics. But the, I would move back to the why. Why should we care? 
is the question that you have to answer for the audience or else people aren't going to listen to this talk. So like I said at the beginning, I gave a, a, an, I created another video on why you should learn to present. I really believe that this can be a, a transformational thing for your life and your career, having the skills to be able to present and being able to copy, you know, or, or learn from, I should say, a, a proven method by someone who's successfully given a lot of presentations, that's something that can really shortcut your development process. So you see there, I was moving back to the why. So keep figuring out as you go through, why should we care? And make sure that's the forefront of what you're doing, because if people aren't engaging with what you're saying, it's a waste of time anyway. So make sure you answer that question. And so keep going back to the why and the, the, the bigger picture of what you should be talking about. Now, you need to make sense of the research. You might have piles and piles, pages and pages of notes from the things you've been, been reading and been gathering and maybe reflecting on over a period of weeks. Write all those things down, but then keep writing and rewriting those focusing questions as you go. If you had a question at the beginning, you might now develop many, many more questions because as you read something, it makes you think, but what about that? And how does that connect to the other thing? So keep writing those questions and in your research, follow those trails and that will help you start to develop uh, your own thoughts about things and develop a really solid argument as well. You need to identify in the research the resonant points. You've got to find the, the needles in the haystacks. You've got to, to find the nuggets of gold that are there. And that's where you have to be smart. You have to be intelligent. It's not just a paint by numbers thing. But going through this process uh, really helps you because you've got a, a solid uh, method to follow and you can apply your intellect and your knowledge and your experience at each of those points. So make sure you give your response to the research too. Don't just repeat things blindly. Think critically about what you're reading. And then also during the whole research process, try and find examples and illustrations. It's really important to make your talk um, interesting by allowing there to be plenty of examples or illustrations or demonstrations throughout because that will help keep people engaged. So don't just like shoehorn them in in the end, but try and make them more integral to what you're doing. And we're going to do that right now because the next job after research is structure, developing the structure of the talk, the presentation. And I'm going to switch over now to this Fig Jam board and show you on screen how I develop a structure once I've got uh, piles of research and I develop it into something that's going to keep people engaged and communicate really well. So let's jump over to the screen. I've switched over to Fig Jam, which is a free add-on, extra thing for Figma, which you can use for free at figma.com. And this is a lesson from my Skillshare class, Unboring Your Presentation. And this lesson is called A Memorable Presentation. So I've started maybe writing some of the focusing questions I would have. What makes a good presentation? And then I thought, mm, what makes a presentation memorable? So I've written a few bullet points of ideas that I might have. If you've got fewer points to remember, a striking image, if it's emotive because we remember how we feel about things, uh, a mnemonic, that's like a little memory device like my very easy method just set up nine planets except there's eight planets now so i don't know what kids use these days uh, alliteration just some some ideas alliteration is kind of cheesy isn't it but some ideas so i'll write these down and then i'll kind of move along here and my big idea that i brought through is that one visual point that sort of bring this together if you have uh, one thing, a really strong visual that makes your point, that's going to be totally memorable. So this is the crux of my talk, so my lesson. So I've brought these things down here. And what I do is I make these post-it notes. So I used to do this with physical post-it notes, but it's pretty cool here in FigJam or any sort of similar software as well where you can just sort of drag things around. So that's what I've written down, one visual point. So I've started to develop this. Now, I also have this color code system. So gray here, or like just black text, is 
just a point, like if I'm just saying something and it's just uh, didactic teaching. So one visual point, and then I've written down that some, some extra notes here. And what I try and do is I try and break down every single idea to a, a separate post it and just kind of separate out. This is after the research, all the key uh, elements. So this idea that you want to be clear in your own mind if you're communicating something that's really important. So I'm developing this. What do you want your audience to remember? Or another way to say that, how would you like them to summarize what you said? And this idea of plant a memorable image in their mind. So it's just developing these uh, things. So by the way, these post-its are the image that I want you to remember uh, for this whole video because I think that will bring back all the points we've talked about when we zoom out and you see uh, what I'm doing here because it's visual. It's a, it's a demonstration, which is one technique you can use as well as stories, illustrations, you know, metaphors, that kind of thing. Okay, so one visual point is the main thing. So what's a memorable image for this? So I would think about that. And I would just take my time and sometimes it takes days and sometimes you have to carry it around a little note on your phone and come back to it or say, while I'm driving in the car, I'm just going to think through one visual point, one visual point. How can I do that? Okay, well, one point made visual. So an image is going to be visual anyway. So I just need something that represents one point. So at first I thought maybe like a pin or something like that, you know, a sharp point. But a pin is, you know, just a line really as a visual. You're not going to see it. So... Then I thought of a lone nail. So a nail could be a bit thicker in the shaft so you'd be able to see it, but then it's got the point at the end. So if I just put one nail on screen, that makes the same one visual point. And this is kind of the uh, similar to the, the final graphic that was on screen, one visual point. So with this talk that I'm preparing here, I wanted everyone to walk away and just remember the lone nail in their head. Whereas here, I want you to remember these post-its. So I have some more elements here from my research. So I've got this purple. Now purple I use for secondary sources, quotes, things like that. So in the Paul Arden said in this book, the more striking visual your presentation is, the more people will remember it. And he gives this uh, illustration and he used any metaphors, images, illustrations, demonstrations. Those things are blue. Um, and I like to have lots of blue. So. He talks about Sydney Opera House, how the architect uh, presented the plans as looking like a sail, and that's what helped him. And so I thought, this is a really cool story. I can tell that story myself. But then I went to Sydney. I had the pleasure of visiting uh, Sydney Opera House. So I've got a photograph from my visit. And then it's from quite a few years ago. And so I've got a bit of a strange haircut and all that. So I thought, ah, I can be self-deprecating about myself so that's another thing that I've developed um, that's always the best kind of humor I'm always safer to take the mick out of yourself rather than other people so I've developed this some ideas and then I thought well how do you back up this so you need some examples so of these sorts of memorable speeches that are very visual so when Churchill says we will fight them on the beaches we will fight them on the landing grounds we'll fight them in the fields and so you imagine in your mind all these different scenarios that Churchill describes. JFK, we choose to go to the moon in this decade, you know, the speech, uh, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. But the image of going to the moon, that's so visual. You imagine rocket ships, you see this picture of the moon, something we see, we've all seen in the night sky. So very, very visual. So that's why it becomes a very sort of uh, men memorable speech. Another colour that I would use would be red, and I use this for primary sources. So, for example, if you're doing a study on a book, uh, the quotes from that book would be in red, and then the secondary sources would be in, in purple. So it's just an example. If you're doing a profile on a person, quotes from that person themselves would be in red, quotes about them would be in purple. So if you just zoom out, you see I have all these sorts of post-its. Now, this talk is only... Two minutes and 23 seconds. It's very short, okay? So I don't have a lot of post-its, but there's enough. So then what I would do is develop the structure. Now, I would use some or all of these post-its that I've made. So this perp this grey one, the cool thing is I've already been able to, to change that now into a blue one. 
uh, I'm just going to copy this down here. So I don't need this. I can express it visually. So the more blue, the better. So I, I would bring down copies of kind of all the, the key things. I think that's kind of covered with these other bits. And I would just bring everything down here. Okay, and these are the, the elements that I've got. And now I need to develop a structure of where I'm going to start. Good uh, talks have a beginning, middle, and an end. And I think the introduction, I'm going to talk here about myself to lead into this comment. So I visited Sydney. It's just interesting. I won't labor the point. I can be a little bit humorous, which is always good for an introduction, and then lead into the main, how this is delivered. And then I'll hit them with the main point of my talk, which is that you want one visual point. Um, and Paul Arden's quote is a way of backing that up. And then I will show some examples to show that this works and in famous examples it's done. And then just remind people at the end of this to be clear in their own mind. So this is the structure. So again, it's only a two minute talk, but this is how I develop it. So I would start here and just go row by row. And this is a kind of talk which keeps people engaged. It keeps them interested and it's memorable for them. And when you develop your structure, you want to look at it and make sure it's engaging. If there's not enough blue, if you've got like one blue and 30 gray, People are going to get bored at some point. So you want to make sure throughout the talk at regular intervals, there's something visual for people to connect to. There's some sort of image. There's, there's a story that you tell so people can uh, click back in and you're not just giving them information, information, points, 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 because it's just too overwhelming and people are going to quickly check out. Now you have some structure, but the way you make your talk go from good to great is by editing. Go back steps if necessary. For example, if you have a weak argument in certain areas, you need to beef that up or you maybe need to do a little bit more reading to think it through. Add where it's lacking, but moreover, edit where it's boring. That's really going to help you. And once you've edited and you're really happy with this structure, then you need to create some sort of notes for yourself that you're going to have with you when you deliver your talk, your presentation. And I find that transcripts don't work so well. You don't sound very natural when you read from a transcript. Now, it helps you sound really articulate, but it's a bit fake. And I think you'll connect with people a lot better when you just have some notes, some bullet points. Now, the way I like to do notes, so the way I would develop something uh, like the structure I, I said before, that was pretty close. And I'd maybe just put that like in a Word document and I would color code in the same way. So my points would be in black and the main text. And then I would have primary sources in red and secondary sources in purple and illustrations, examples, demonstrations in blue. So use whatever system you want, but I can then look through my notes, just how we look through that structure on screen and see immediately that, oh, there's not enough illustrations in this section. So this section is getting a little bit boring and we need to make that a little bit more interesting, bring something in there and rejig things at the final stage. And just having those notes with you with maybe just bullet points or titles, like for that Sydney Opera House a uh, whole range of stories about me being there, then about Jorn Utzon and Paul Arden's commentary on that. I'd probably just write Sydney Opera House in blue and try and memorise all that, that section and just let it flow naturally from one part to another. The final thing in your preparation would be to prepare your visual aids. So you might have props with you. You might have handouts for your audience. You might need to design a slide presentation. Now, that's a whole other video, a whole other topic, but that would be the final part of your or presentation. So just think about the, the, how those things can uh, complement your message, can make it more memorable without distracting from the message. So in summary, find out what you should be doing. Ask why. Why should people care? Why is this thing important? Do the research, find the gold, develop a structure, 
edit it to move it from good to great, then create your notes and visuals to help you. And if you prepared well, then you can be confident. I always find that's the biggest factor for me. I know public speaking is like the number one fear. People would rather die or swim with sharks or whatever that kind of trope, that try phrase gets rolled out every time, doesn't it? You talk about public speaking, but when I've prepared well, I feel confident and I'm believing the message and I'm ready to deliver it. So hopefully this form of good preparation will help you as well. I actually made a whole uh, little, it's pretty short actually, course, about 20 minutes on unboring your presentation. And it's a little bit more polished than this video. And it's helping you create memorable and effective presentations. That's over on Skillshare. You can take that for free with a link that's down in the description of this video. And I'm going to be doing more about presenting and just all forms of communication because this channel's for the communicators. So if you subscribe, that would really encourage me on this journey of trying to upload every week. Thanks for being here. Have a great day and talk to you soon.